Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening everyone. A 58-year-old woman remains in hospital tonight with serious injuries sustained in a single vehicle crash at Winkley. Police were called to Flowery Gully Road just after six last night. This was the mangled mess emergency services were faced with as they responded to the crash call out. So we've had police, fire, uh, ambulance crews and SES all come to the scene tonight to help. The primary concern freeing the seriously injured Flowery Gully woman from the wreckage as quickly as possible. We managed to lower the vehicle down and as we did the door uh, released and we were able to open it. The 58 year old and sole occupant of the Mitsubishi Lancer wagon was then rushed to the Launceston General Hospital where she remains in a serious but stable condition tonight. Several units scoured the scene late into the evening trying to determine exactly what might have caused the collision. Travelling in a northerly direction. Uh, she's left the roadway and crossed to the other side of the road and impacted with a tree. Anyone who may be able to assist police with their investigation can contact Crime Stoppers. The incident serving as a reminder to all motorists. Look, I would just like to remind all road users just to slow down, observe the conditions of the road and drive to them and just be mindful to always have your seatbelt on. Jesse Gilmore, 7 Tasmania News. Meanwhile, emergency services freed a man who had become trapped in his car after a crash at Lower Longley early this afternoon. The man was driving along Vince's saddle when the rollover occurred. He was physically uninjured, but the incident caused a significant traffic build-up heading south towards Hewenville for more than an hour. Authorities using this as an opportunity to remind people to drive to the conditions. A teenager has been charged with arson four months after a heritage listing building in Prospect was burnt down. The 19-year-old from Hadspen will face court next month, accused of setting alight the property known as the Gatehouse on the 22nd of December last year. Police are still looking for another man of a similar age and slim build wearing a singlet who was last seen running from the fire on Westbury Road. Anyone with information can contact Crime Stoppers anonymously. A Tasmanian Liberal senator has lashed out at Labor today, saying a leaked email has led him to believe the party plans to scrap millions of dollars worth of funding for projects in regional areas. Labor has slammed the claims and says the party will make its funding commitments clearer in the coming weeks. Tasmanian Senator Jonathan Dunningham claims this is the leaked email, prompting him to believe regional communities will be worse off under Labor. Labor plan to cut $85 million uh, from vital programs, uh, vital projects right around this state through the Community Development Grants Program. The Tasmanian Senator saying this correspondence between state and federal local government associations shows Labor can't guarantee funding for local community projects. Labor is refuting the claim, but is keeping details of funding commitments under wraps. People are paying their taxes and they expect us to do proper due diligence about what commitments we're going to match and which ones we're not. And we've said very clearly, we'll make them very clear between now and election day. With Senator Dunningham questioning if the funding might instead be spent on Labor's push for a Tasmanian AFL team. What Labor is saying is, no, we don't agree. Uh, we think this money is better off going to the AFL on the mainland for a Hobart-based AFL team rather than to your regional communities. Uh, the implications will be far-reaching. Yeah, our commitment is not going to the AFL. Our commitment's about investments here in Tasmania so we can have a team in the AFL. Mm. It comes on the same day Victorian Senator Kim Carr stopped by Hobart to spruik a $10 million commitment for the CSIRO. This will provide 20 extra jobs and allow the science agencies to actually develop a coherent plan to be able to work out where the gaps are in our science and to be able to ensure that we can meet those gaps. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. Welcome back. Police have revealed the number of car crashes over the Easter break halved from 2018. There were nine crashes across the state compared with 17 last year. Of those nine, one was a fatality. One fatality is uh, one more than, than we'd like to see. Overall, we're very happy with um, the attitude of the driving public. Um, we conducted about 23,000 uh, random breath tests. 
59 drug drivers were detected over Easter, along with 43 drink drivers. Tempers have flared at Airlie Beach today as hundreds of climate change activists rallied in the Whitsunday seaside town. Bob Brown's Stop Adani Convoy has turned nasty, with claims a member with disabilities was assaulted amid threats from pro-mining protesters. The Queensland Government has called for calm as tensions mount ahead of this weekend's demonstration at Clermont. A group of Tasmanians is gearing up to conquer a gruelling trek to raise money for local medical research. They're set to take on the Kokoda Trail in Papua New Guinea next April, announcing the trip today following yesterday's Anzac commemorations. You wouldn't think energetic twin brothers Xavier and Lachlan Pede had a difficult start to life. Yes, I met them very early in their life. They were born nearly four months early at 25 weeks gestation. Uh, just over five years ago uh, and were in our unit for four and six months re respectively uh, and needed a lot of help from us. Today the five-year-old boys sit with the man who helped save their lives with their tough start also contributing to vital research. And Lachlan and Xavier were involved in that trial and, and the, uh, have contributed uh, you know, their part to uh, the findings as they will be when we uh, finish the trial off at the end of next year. Professor Dargaville's pioneering trial, funded through two grants awarded by the Royal Hobart Hospital Research Foundation, and he'll be joining forces with the organisation and several community members in a charity hike of a lifetime. Uh, we're heading off to Kokoda at the Anzac time in April of 2020 next year. It really does uh, attract not only the hiking enthusiasts, but also the support of those around them to assist us with our fundraising. Well, I think it's important to be able to give back to the Research Foundation that's, that's supported my research and that of so many others so well, uh, and to be able to, to give back to the research community. The Foundation is aiming to raise $75,000 while honouring our fallen diggers next Anzac Day. Ruby Kamain, 7 Tasmania News. Beers of all flavours are now flowing at the Fresh Hop Festival in Launceston. The event is known for pushing beer's creative boundaries, with one local brewer really shaking things up. Just the thought of mixing dairy and beer might make your stomach churn, but Scottsdale's Little Rivers Brewery says its new milkshake beer is an utter delight. Always wanted to do a milkshake beer because uh, I actually grew up myself on a dairy farm in, in the northeast, and it's in our blood. The creative concoction uses lactose sourced from northeast farms. The lactose uh, is unable to be fermented by the brewer's yeast, so it leaves a nice sweetness to the beer, which goes well with the bitterness of the hops. More than two dozen breweries are serving beer here with their freshest hops. There's only like a 24 hour, 48 window, hour window where you can actually brew with the fresh hops. Other than that, you need to use pellets. So it's quite a unique concept to brew with fresh hops. First drinks were much earlier in the day when a hops expert shared the latest trends in beer making from the United States. From a brewing perspective, we're very much aware of Australian hops. In fact, you'll find craft brewers branding beers with Australian hops. The professor sees Tasmania's abundance of hops as something we can really tap into. The craft brewers are always looking for uh, something new, something different, innovating. And with innovations like milkshake beer already popular in the US, I'm told it's only a matter of time before we see more and more of it down here. If you want to try it and all sorts of other types too, the Fresh Hop Beer Festival is on all weekend. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local not-for-profit Tasmanian super fund. The Australian share market has endured a thin day of trade with banks and CSL helping offset a subdued resources sector. The ASX 200 index rose 3.5 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 70.25 US cents and just over 63 euro cents. Back home, the Devils have made five changes ahead of their NAB League clash against the Western Jets. The star trio of Jackson Callow, Sam Collins and Oliver Davis are among those making way after being picked to represent the Australian under-17 side playing New Zealand. Isaac Chugg, Josh Clifford, Bailey Gordon, Harvey Griffiths and Tyler Penwright come in. Sunday's match will be a curtain raiser to the Hawthorne-Carlton clash at Utah Stadium.
It's something that's quite unique to the competition and I think probably the envy of a lot of the other um, clubs within the competition too. The first bounce is at 1.45. The Devils currently have two wins and a loss. Following a three-week break, State Netball League action returns this weekend with Cavaliers preparing for a big test against the undefeated Arrows on Saturday before taking on Karana, who will be keen to notch up their first win of the season. Definitely back our game plan and, and what we've been implementing at training. So um, we've full got full confidence in ourselves that we can carry that outcome game day. In, the, in Saturday's other matchups, Karana take on Devon. Kingston battle the Hawks. Then on Sunday, Cripps played Devon before the top of the table clash before Arrows and Hawks. Good evening. Well, I guess you all felt the chill in the breeze today with temperatures up to 8 degrees below average. Hobart and Devonport 13, Launceston 14 and Burnie just 10. The top was 16 at St Helens after a low of minus 2 on Mount Wellington. Friendly Beaches 15 today, Flinders Island 14, King Island, Low Head and Scottsdale 13 degrees, Strawn 12, Grove and Ooze 10, Lyaweenie made it to a top of 2. Low level clouds streamed over the state today in a cold air mass, mostly clear over the northeast of the state. Now that cold pool of air also over Victoria and adjacent waters, more cloud as over eastern Queensland and onshore winds brought coastal cloud over the south, mostly clear over the northern parts of the country. Tomorrow the high moves over the bite, extending a broad ridge over most of the country. Westerly winds continue to stream over Tasmania. A cold front is near northeast New South Wales. The winds blowing in at 25 to 35 knots and to 40 knots over the south and increasing elsewhere later, swells at 6 metres in western and southern waters. A severe weather warning for damaging winds for central and southern Tasmania. A gale warning from uh, Wineglass Bay down and back around to St Helens Point. A strong wind warning for the remainder of the Upper East there and the Derwent Estuary. A small craft wind alert for the lakes. We also have a flood watch for the Hewan catchment and a warning to sheep graziers for the east and south. So here's the forecast. 16 for Hobart, a shower or two. Windy again, Maydina just 12. 12 also for eight Oatlands with a late shower. Launceston becoming windy and cloudy. 16 the top, 15 for Devonport. Lyaweenie minus three tonight, eight tomorrow. Showers increasing. Shower or two for Burnie and 15. 15 also for Strawn and Marrowall with that same sort of forecast. And for St Helens, 16 partly cloudy. Swansea up to 16. Orford, 16 as well. Sunday, showers over the west, south and Bass Strait. Fine and partly cloudy elsewhere. Another shower for the west on Monday but fine for the rest of the state. And on Tuesday, fine and partly cloudy with a late shower over the west and north. Sunny again in Perth. Fine but cloudy for Adelaide and Melbourne. Sunny conditions for Canberra, Sydney and Brisbane. A little bit of cloud about, 8 degrees in Hobart, 8 degrees and clear in Launceston, clear in Devonport and 8 degrees. Joe, the puffer jackets will be out and about this weekend. There's got to be something better to wear than that to keep warm, really. I just put your rug boots with them, that's all you need. <laughs> Thank you, Bert. That's all from us for now. Stay warm and we'll see you a little later this evening. Bye-bye. <laughs>